Hello and welcome to another video. On this video I'm going to take a look at RF Prostatin. You can just see me be see behind me there is the R11 style building and in the background as well is the standby set house. Um, I've had special permission to come up here today because it is private land uh, and I've had permission to actually take a look around inside the R11 building. So let's do that now. On entering the building, the first room on the left would have been the guards room. This was manned by armed personnel and would have been the checkpoint where everyone entering or leaving the building would have reported to. There was no armoury in this room, but we'll see that a bit later on. The bricked up window at the rear allowed for a full view of the car park. There is a small storeroom just off camera to the left. Down the stairs is a toilet. I think this was for females, as there are only two toilet facilities in this complex. Adjacent to this is another room, and there are a few telltale signs of what it was used for. First of all, notice this window, or serving catch, that connects this room with the kitchen. Behind me, we can see where there used to be a shower room, with three shower cubicles. The wall paint changes from cream and grey to green, suggesting this room was split into two, with the green part being the sleeping area. More evidence to support this can be seen if we take a closer look at the windows. Both windows in this room have fixing points for curtain rails. These are the only two windows in the complex like this. As I've just said, the serving hatch connects to the kitchen. My guide informed me that there was an old Bristol style sink in here and also an old water boiler. There is another room next to the kitchen. On the right is yet another serving hatch. This room is presumed to be the rest room or a day room. Leading off this room is what is, quite obviously, the male toilets, which makes me think that the toilet I passed before was the female one. Back up the stairs and directly opposite the guard room is the complex's main office. I just want to point out that the complex for many years has been home to the Prestatin Rifle and Pistol Club, and we will see as we go deeper into the complex that it's in various states of repairs. These benches were brought from RF Sealand by the club at some point in the past and are original to the era we are looking at between the 1950s and the early 60s. Behind the complex's main office are two more rooms, with this one being the complex's workshop. Remember I said earlier that the armoury wasn't in the guards room? In this room if we look up at the ceiling we can see metal meshing which is in keeping with the style of armories found of this time period and in this type of building. Now we are looking down to the far end of the club's target range. When the building was operational this would have been the heart of the complex housing the majority of the top secret radar equipment. Behind the targets is a deep pit where the wires for this room would have come in. This is a view of the corridor that runs down the whole length of the complex. My guide tells me that this was a false floor before it was filled with concrete, and it would have been finished with parquet flooring. Underneath would have run more wires. Halfway down on the left is a large room. This in all probability was an air conditioning room. The reason I say this is because if we take a look on top of the roof, we can see an obviously large raised vent and this room is directly below it. Now I'm at the far end of the complex and move outside. So here you can see a groove up the side of this hill and on top there is the radar plinth and the wires would have come down, down here in a trench and in through the door where I've just walked out of. There's even some tiles that would have covered the electrical cables dotted about outside. 
So this is the radar plinth and on top of it would have been the Type 14 radar. Um, I'll bring you in for a closer look in a second and also we'll get onto the roof and uh, I'll show you where the mount was for the, for the radar. Inside on the floor are two concrete slabs. This is where the electric motor was mounted that turned the radar. Looking up we can see the drive shaft hole. And on the roof itself is the steel mounting chassis. This picture of a Type 14 radar was taken by John Warnham of islandimages.co.uk. I'll leave a link in the description box below to this website. So this building is known as the standby set building. And then the big doorway here would have been a generator, a very large one. And just through there would have been the transformer. And it's believed that this side was just a, um, a garage. The purpose of the standby set house and the generator was to automatically provide electricity in the event of a power outage. Right, just let me pause the tour here for a second because Chris, uh, my guide, showed me a top secret map which he had obtained from the Royal Air Force archives. This map tells us that the RAF was using this site about 10 years before the complex we see today was built. So if you look in the notes section of the map at note B, it says existing structures include F, an IFF cubicle, and C, and a 1941 brick and concrete building. So I've just brought you back outside to the standby set house for just a second. And we'll see on the right hand side of the photo here that there's a tree clearly growing out of a square um, brick kind of structure. Now Chris thought this may have been a cooling tank for the engines um, and I thought it could possibly be um, kind of a plinth for a fuel tank for the, for the generator. However, let's have a look back at the map and see what the map tells us. So just ignore all the numbers and the crosses for a second on the map. Obviously I've put a blue arrow where this brick and concrete um, structure is on the map. So bearing in mind there's no actual other structures because this map is 1941, RF Prestatin wasn't built till 1952 or thereabouts. So there's no other structures on the map. So looking back at the notes, a 1941 brick stroke concrete building. So that's just thrown mine and Chris's theories straight out the window. There was some kind of building made out of brick and concrete. 1941 is the date. We don't know what its purpose was. So also on the map was a reference section. Uh, here we can see item numbered one to six with a description. Number one is quite obvious, a Type 14 radar. Now the RVT part means that it's a signals vehicle. So the Type 14 and the Type 13, which is item number one and two, are quite possibly vehicle mounted radars. Um, to explain uh, the rest of them, uh, item number three, RVT467, I couldn't find any sources on that, but it would be a vehicle of some description. Um, RVT4, uh, uh, item number four, RVT100, is a car with a VHF transmitter with a telescopic aerial. Um, item number five, RVT150, is a car with a VHF receiving unit. Um, and item number six is RVT456, which is a source car. Again, I couldn't really find any information on um, on item number six, but these are kind of 1940s to very early 1950s types of car and signal equipment they was using. So if we just look at the map once again, we can see the positions of where all the vehicles were. So we know that RAF Prestatin was a top secret radar installation. In fact, when the R11 building and the set house was built, it was done in total secrecy. The Royal Air Force are very clever at hiding things they don't want people to know about and hiding buildings in plain sight is the best way, or is it? I took this photo standing in the car park which is in front of the R11 complex. 
from here I can clearly see all the buildings in Prestatyn which is below the hill. However, anywhere in Prestatyn, if you're along the beach um, or you're in the town and you look up the Prestatyn Hill, all you can see is the BT mass. You cannot see the R11 building. So I know you've been wondering all throughout this video what happens to the toilet waste with the complex being sat on top of a hill. Obviously there's no sewers around. Well, the RAF had thought about that one as well and they built their own filter bed. There's one last thing I want to show you and it's this construction here. I wonder if you can tell what it is. With a building this large and of its secretive nature, it also needed patrolling by dogs. These are the dog kennels. So why was Area of Prestatin built? And why was the military so interested in radar? Well, at the end of World War II, it was realised that the capabilities of radars at the time couldn't detect low-flying enemy aircraft until it was too late. With Cold War frictions between Russia and the United States getting hotter, Britain needed to protect the skies once again. The Royal Air Force began upgrading Britain's radar systems and RAF Prestatin was a CHEL site, CHEL standing for Chain Home Extra Low Radar. This system could detect low-flying enemy aircraft even as far out as the Atlantic, but technology was developing rapidly. This is why the R11 complex's life was so short-lived. It was only operational between 1952 and 1958, possibly into the early 60s after which the RAF abandoned the site and for years it lay derelict. That was until the Prestatin Rifle and Pistol Club made it their home. I would just like to say a massive thank you to Chris and the members of the club. I was very honoured to film inside this complex as this was the first time ever in its history that a video camera had been allowed inside its walls. I'll definitely come back in a couple of years to do a follow-up video to see how renovation work has progressed. I hope you, the viewer, has enjoyed the journey with me also. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.